Number 21. Identify the intermolecular forces present in the following solids, and then we have CH3, CH2Cl. All right. So in order to find intermolecular forces, uh, the easiest way to go about this is to draw the Lewis structure. Now, I know that it's one extra step, but if you can visualize what this looks like, that will make all the difference. And the idea here is that if you start getting good with your Lewis structures, you can see what the Lewis structure would be in your mind. That's where we want to be at. But for a case of purposes of teaching, I'm going to have the Lewis structure on the screen. Now, we have tons of uh, videos just for teaching you how to draw Lewis structures. So if you need any extra guidance, you can always check out those videos on the channel. I got you there. Uh, but this will be kind of like a quick in review. So you can pause the video if you want to try to attempt to draw this one and see if your answer matches mine. Now, when your compounds are written out in this long format, right, it's best to draw your molecule from left to right. These are organic compounds because the basis and the backbone of these molecules are carbon and hydrogen related. So if you have carbon and hydrogen as the bulk of your molecule, it's organic, uh, and write it out from left to right. So the first atom that I'm going to put is a carbon. So a C. It's attached to three hydrogens. And remember, all hydrogens just want single bonds. So H, H, and H. Room for one more bond. It's going to be bound to that carbon. That carbon is bound to two hydrogens, one and two. This carbon's got room for one more single bond. Remember, we always have to abide by the octet, and that's going to be the chlorine. Chlorine has the six lone dots, and now we're good. All right, so there is my compound. Let's figure out the types of intermolecular forces. Now remember, intermolecular forces are forces if you had two of the same molecules interacting with each other. The forces outside the molecule is the intermolecular force. So we have to picture, I have two of these. What's the forces that are holding the two of them together or interacting together? All right. So the way that I wrote them is the most basic force all the way down to the most specific. So dispersion force could also be London forces, could also be uh, could also be Van der Waal forces. This is just specific to what your teacher or professor calls them. I call them dispersion. But dispersion forces, all compounds and all molecules have this force. This is like your instantaneous dipoles. There's no specificity here. They all got them. So whatever you're going to draw, it's a gimme that this is going to have dispersion. Okay, so it definitely has a dispersion force when two of these molecules come together. The next one is dipole-dipole attraction. We're getting more specific because only polar covalent molecules will have this force. So the, the question is, is this polar or is this nonpolar? Well, remember, polar means that your molecule is asymmetrical. Right? We don't want any symmetry here. We want something that looks different on both sides. So you cut it down the middle and see what's going on. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my molecule and cut it down the middle. On the left side, I have a CH3. On the right side, I have CH2Cl. That is not the same. There's no symmetry here. Right? I have a chlorine on the left, but no chlorine on the right. So because of that, this is asymmetrical, and this is polar. And if you have a polar molecule, you will have a dipole-dipole attraction. This is also known as a dipole-dipole force, so it doesn't really matter the language. Just make sure that it's dipole-dipole. All right. Last one, and the most specific intermolecular force, is called the hydrogen bond. Keep in mind that it's not an actual covalent bond. I don't know why they call it a hydrogen bond, per se. It's still an interaction. But you have to have a hydrogen, but that hydrogen has to be bound to a really, really electronegative element. Specifically, only nitrogen or only oxygen 
or only fluorine. So you're looking for an HN bond or an HO bond or an HF bond. But all my hydrogens, there's five of them, they're bound to carbon. That's not nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So this one does not have hydrogen bonding. And we are done. So this molecule just has the two of them. It's got dispersion and it's got dipole-dipole. And that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Let's keep running through these videos. Keep learning from them so that you could do well on your test and quiz. I hope this is helping you out. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for being part of this awesome community. We're almost at 35,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys. So thank you for that. And let's just keep going. Keep chugging away. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.